Welcome to season four of the Funding Love Adoption Podcast with Mal and Kate. We are two adoptive moms that seek to love, support, and elevate all corners of the adoption triad while running our nonprofit, Funding Love. Funding Love creates post-adoption experiences that strengthen bonds, build community, and restore people. And the Funding Love Adoption Podcast exists to bring education and awareness to those both inside and outside the adoption community. So pour yourself your favorite beverage and pull up a chair because everyone has a seat at our table. Together, we are Funding Love, the podcast. Welcome back to season four of the Funding Love Adoption Podcast. This is episode two, and we are here in our new studio. Kate and I are in the same room together. We are so excited about this brand new season. Yes, and if you did not tune in uh, to the first episode, we're going to be together all season. So it's going to be so fun that we are recording this in our little studio all season long. That's right. Um, So be sure to look out for some bonus content being dropped midweek. Yep. And we subscribe. Yeah. Yes. We want y'all. We, we don't say this enough, but we want to remind y'all, if you love what we're doing and you're supporting us, subscribing is a simple way to support us so other people can find us, whether that be on YouTube, um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is. We appreciate that. That's right. And this whole season is going to be dedicated to pre-adoption yes. process mm-hmm. of the adoption journey. So it's going to be exciting as the seasons go on. We're going to work through. We really wanted to start from the beginning and start fresh. Yeah. And so here we are with episode two. And today we are going to be talking about different types of adoption and choosing ethical adoption. So right. let's yeah. jump in. Tell us about different types of adoption. So the different types of adoption, just to give a quick little summary, domestic infant, you have international, you have foster care, and then kinship. And I would say there's like step parent, but we don't yeah, necessarily there's lots know of much about layers yeah, lots, lots of little layers there. But those are the four types that I would say are the most popular that I'm familiar with. But there's also ways to get there that are different through mm-hmm. an attorney, an agency, or a consultant. Yes. So we're going to talk about all of that and then the ethics around all of that. Yes. So last week we talked about the why. Why are you jumping into this journey? Why do you feel called to adoption? What is your purpose and your mission there? Like having that written down almost as like your mission statement yes. in your adoption journey is where we need to start. And then here we are to like, okay, what's next? And mm-hmm. so we feel like this is the next practical thing to talk about, to mm-hmm. give advice on. Mm-hmm. Um so domestic infant adoption, let's start there. That's what you and I are most familiar with because that's the types of adoption we did for our, our kiddos. So that is just means that you're adopting in the United States. In, in your own country, domestic infant would be you're adopting an infant in your own country. So yes. typically it's a newborn. Um, that is usually the way you match with an expectant mother. They choose you and then you go through that process and, and you welcome mm-hmm. a child from the hospital. So that's typical. And you could match with an expectant mother at any stage. Um, some think that, oh, I'm going to be with her throughout her whole pregnancy. That might be true. You might you might get matched when she's six months pregnant or right. three months pregnant, but you might get matched when she's nine months pregnant. Or in my case, the baby was already here. Um, yeah. So it there is a huge range in the we domestic all, we, You and I both have that. So like for, for Mason, it, he was already here. Mm-hmm. And then for my oldest, Libby, it was like three weeks before she was born. Mm-hmm. And then for my youngest, it was like four and a half, five months of the pregnancy I got to experience. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's a Different range. for everybody. Yeah. So yeah, right. that that is that is way. But then let's talk about international. Yeah. So international means you're adopting from another country. Yeah. Oftentimes that's going to include um, different fees for each country. It's yes. going to include travel. Sometimes you're going to have to consider staying in that country for weeks or a month mm-hmm. at a time. Um, and it it is a probably a bit of a longer process, but again, inter- I mean, domestic infant, you could go for years with that too. So yeah. I wouldn't choose an adoption process based on quickness, but we can talk about that soon. Yeah, And then we have foster to adopt. Yes. So the foster care system, I mean, this, this is a whole like little mini conversation mm-hmm. within this conversation because um, foster care, pe- many people will say, I'm going to choose foster care because it's free. I'm going to adopt through foster care because that's the free route. And I'm not going to lie. When I was jumping into the process, people were like, well, just do that. That's free. And you're like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. That is. (laughs) But then the more you learn and the more that I learn and I advocate for, that Mm -hmm. is not the reason you get into foster care. Now, could could you say eventually a placement will turn into an adoption? Yes. Um, And there are 
children in foster care who become available to adopt as far as mm-hmm. their their biological parents have have lost the right to, to parent. Mm-hmm. And, and so then those children um, are ready to be placed in a forever family. So yes, that does happen. But when you jump into foster care, the goal is reunification. Our yeah. goal is to be a foster parent, to foster and love that child in the period of time while they're waiting to be reunified with their biological parents or biological family, whoever it might be in their right. family. So that is the goal. And to having a heart posture, mm-hmm. knowing that um, going into foster care is so important yes. for the child. Yes. For the child. Um yeah, so I mean, I think that that is key. But yes, foster care is a way that you can grow your family as well. Mm-hmm. That is a popular method, I guess, to adopt. Right. Yeah. And then we said that kinship adoption is basically like with do- adopting a family member or a distant family member. Yes. Um, and you gave an example of like Simone Biles yeah. being adopted mm-hmm. uh, by her grandparents, who now she calls her parents. Yeah. So there are lots of different types of adoption, and that's only just a few. There's all kinds of layers in between, like we said. Lots of layers. So I would say, you know, uh, going feeling called to adoption, you probably already have a tug in in some direction, but um, it is it is good just to do a little bit of research and mm-hmm. to to what you feel like where you're being like, cause I know we've talked to some people we've had on the co- podcast before who said, I just knew it was Columbia. Right. I just knew we I have I, a heart for this I, country. Yes, yes. I wanted to adopt because that country means something to me and I wanted, so there are people who already have that inkling. So that is mm-hmm. good to pay attention to in, in your spirit. Yeah. yeah. And I do, I know that at Funding Love, we don't want to, I mean, our goal is never to offend anyone. And so I hate that we feel like we have to make all of these disclaimers. But we said episode one of the Funding Love podcast three years ago that we are going to make mistakes. We're going to say things that maybe weren't exactly the right words or didn't come from the right place. And so we do want to say, just like in foster care, how the goal is to support that child and the best place for them is with their biological family. Funding Love as an organization does recognize that for an infant, being able to be parented by their birth mother, by their mom, is the best place for them. Um, So we do want to say that. Funding Love is a post-adoption support organization, but there are so many people within our organization that do support women post-placement by giving to pregnancy centers, by giving to women's centers. So we do believe that. We want to say as an organization, we want to help women that want to parent their babies be able to do that. So if, you know, your goal is just to help an expectant mom, don't always assume that adoption is the best option for her. Yes. Ask if there's other ways to support her. And as we're talking about ethical adoption agencies and consultants as we go along. Yeah. See if your agency or consultant is asking that question too. Yeah. Is there another way that we can support this woman to parent her own child or is placement genuinely what she wants to do? Some women might be able to and just not be in a place or have the desire to parent. And that's a totally different story. Um, But we do want to say we believe in adoption, but we also believe in pre-adoption care as well. And that the adoptee is always at the center of adoption and what is best for them. I'm, yes, that is. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because with our youngest and in, in, in her uh, adoption journey, I, I loved so much the agency that we uh, ended up working with. Um, that's a whole story how we ended up with them. But um, they are so great because when um, the expectant mother came to the agency, there was a lot of time that mm-hmm. she gave to just getting to know her, understanding her why, mm-hmm. getting to uh, you know kind of let her sit on that, stew on it process the gravity of this decision before she made it right so it wasn't just like oh you you want to choose that okay here look at these papers you're profiles. considering adoption yeah you should Here's do these that profile here. books so you can choose a family there yes. was there was a couple months where there was so much time dedicated to her processing that and being invested in to say is it because you're worried you can't pay for food is it worried because you don't have child care are you worried because you won't be able to go to school we can help you find those resources right right so there are we that is always like the first thing that like warms my heart to know that that has already been vetted for these women that they are loved on in the beginning before they choose a family right for their for their child yes so as we're talking about ethical adoption yeah. and things like that why don't we break down now Do uh, the difference between attorney a consultant uh, yeah. uh, an agency so that those that are just learning know the difference between those yeah, so I'll speak from my experience for as a consultant because for our oldest, we used a consultant. Um, we used Christian adoption consultants, and they were great. 
honestly, we had a great experience with them. Um, but the, the way that I could like wrap it up is that they were the advocate for us, the, the, pers- the prospective adoptive parents, um, because they helped us walk through every step of the process mm-hmm. and kind of calmed our anxieties, calmed our fears, educated us on things. Uh, I thought their education was a, was great. Like they made sure that we understood every part of the process um, and that if we were uncomfortable with something, that isn't for you then. Mm-hmm. Um, or if this is what you were feeling, then please don't go that way. Like they wanted us to be true to our convictions for the sake of the child, for the sake mm-hmm. of all that. So they were, they were great to work with, but they were, they're the adoptive parents advocate. And when you work with a consultant, they have a relationship with multiple agencies. So it allows you to apply to multiple agencies at the same time. Some people find that a benefit because they say when you have multiple agencies, you can place, you you get matched sooner, right? And so the process- That is, is a possibility, but it's not always true. So not always true. don't so, go in it with that expectation, right. but it is a possibility. They say that that is a benefit possibly of going with the consultant. Um, but I do feel like as a first time we're walking through adoption, there are a lot of benefits to using a consultant because there was so much that I didn't know that I was fearful of that I felt like I had a consultant, somebody mm-hmm. that I could call, email, text and say, hey, I don't know what to do. I'm I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm fearful. What do I do in this process? Or even when you get um, expectant mother profiles that you look over, whether you as a family want to present to her, um, they kind of walk you through that too. Like, how do you, how do you know when to present and mm-hmm. all of that. So mm-hmm. they are a big advocate for making sure that as adoptive parents, you have what you need. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing is that they vet all of those agencies they work with so that they already do a little bit of the ethical vetting for you so that those that you are um, presenting to or working with or apply to are ethical. Okay. So that that is one thing I liked about them, um, especially as a Christian organization, they, right. they vetted um, and I right. felt comfortable with that. Yeah. That was good. So then working with an agency means that you're working with just one agency. Right. Uh, You are, like for us, we worked with one agency. We chose that agency because they were recommended by a friend that had adopted. We researched them. We went to their informational meetings to learn more about them before we started the process. But we were only presented with profiles because we were going domestic infant with women that came specifically to that agency uh, to place a child. So. Like you said, it might take longer because they might have less women or expectant moms that they are helping. Um, But it's just, it's another option for you out there. And so to clarify, because it seems like the consultants only work with the adoptive families. So you want to make sure that the agencies that your consultant is working with are agencies that are advocating, like she said, for those expectant mamas and expectant families. That's right. So that's an important question to ask. Yeah. And then you have attorneys. And attorneys Correct. are basically the people that are legalizing the adoption. Mm-hmm. Consultancies and agencies, they have their own recommended attorneys that they work with. So as you're getting towards the end of that process, mm-hmm. they'll say, this is the attorney we work with. But some people will be working specifically with an adoption attorney that knows adoption law. And I mean, that could be someone who was self-matched. It could be someone who kind of used a different mm-hmm. agency that they just kind of came to an attorney. Correct. Yeah. Um, but we do want to say as we're exploring ethical adoptions adoptions, that you want to make sure that you're choosing a good attorney that knows what they're doing. But also attorneys often are not advocating for either party. Yes. They don't typically the know, you know, they're not going to support you in a call and text and be a friend kind of way, <laughs> like Caitlin was referring to. And yeah. oftentimes they're not advocating for the expense. I would say the resources are just not as great as if right. the agency that We're you We're not saying to. their hearts, their their individual personal hearts aren't in the right place, but they right. don't typically have the resources and education that... And not to say that they don't exist because they might. I don't know all the attorneys out there. But one thing that I want to say now going through the process two times is there are different... There is a difference between family law and adoption law. Mm, yes. Very important to know because there are attorneys who say, oh yeah, I can I can do this adoption for you. And they know family law, not the same as adoption law, especially Correct. state by state. So to know, to have an attorney who knows adoption law is different than family law and all and of that. And super important. Like just super important. In our scenario alone, uh, our son is Native American and right. there is a whole separate law and separate like yeah. system and filing that you have to do if you 
are adopting a child yeah. that is of Native American descent. If you have someone that is just a family lawyer, they might not know that. And you have a huge hole in legalizing your adoption. A big so, gap and also more time and more money mm -hmm. uh, out of your pocket. So so those are things all to, to know. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about like some red flags. Red flags. Yes. Yeah. If we're moving into the ethical part of you want to do the best that you can mm -hmm. and make sure that the choices you're making are ethical. Yeah. Let's let's look for some red flags in any of these in an agency or consultant. What would a red flag be? So like promising that you can be placed, you can be matched in three months. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they say, oh yeah. Or just really quickly. Yeah. Just say, oh, if you sign on with us, our, our, our match rate is three months to four months. So you're like, oh great. I'm going to go with this agency mm -hmm. because I'm going to get a baby sooner. Or so, yeah, choose us because we, we have the quickest adoptions. Out yeah. There. Two things I'll say about that. That is a red flag. And also that is not a reason to choose an agency. Right. So like it's a red flag if they're promising you that. And I also would hate for somebody to to have the expectation and the family to have an expectation that it's going to happen because you don't ever want that to be the motive. You want the, you want the right child for your family. I always say you will not miss your child. If you are going through this journey, I'm just going to say it. If you're going to go into the adoption journey and you feel called to this, you will not miss your child. Your child will not miss you mm -hmm. if that is meant to be. So just to back that up, but do not, I would not choose an agency based on that promise or based on that expectation. Mm -hmm. And if they're promising that, why are they promising that? Because that makes no sense because they don't mm -hmm. really know what expected mother would choose you and how that's all going to play out. So there are so much unknowns that to have that promise is a little bit of a red flag, yes, a big red flag. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it most likely means they're just wanting the transaction to happen quickly. So that to they sign can you on. Them. Yes. To yeah. Sign you on. As a so yeah. just be aware of that. Um, I would say another red flag is them not having resources for the expectant family or yeah. expectant mom. Uh, if they don't have their own counseling, if they're not asking the questions like Caitlin mentioned previously yeah. about how can we help you right? Um, outside of just making an adoption plan, do they offer resources during the labor and delivery? Are they offering resources for her post placement and after finalization. Yeah. I think those are all super important questions to ask. And that reminds me, like even I think people forget to ask about the delivery process. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be there at the hospital to advocate for her? Who's going to be there to at the hospital to advocate mm -hmm. for us? Are they the same people or are they different, different people? Because um, we believe through our experiences that the birth mom should have the person that's advocating for her and the adoptive family should have the person that's advocating for them. Or just as an adoptive family, you just need your own support person right. because this that process, especially delivering the hospital, is her time. Mm -hmm. It's like her time to have that support, to know what she's doing, to be reminded what she's doing, to process yeah. the decision that she is still to make Yes, because it is not final. She does not become a birth mom until those papers have been signed. Yes, and that child is not That's her baby. Correct. <laughs> so there is so much there that needs to be given so much love and care and attention in that like super emotional, intense moments in the hospital. I'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. that is so important. And you want to know, ask that question. How is the expected yeah. mother cared for in the hospital and who is your support person? Mm -hmm. and because if, yeah, because and personally, if, we've been through that where there was no support. Right. And that was, that was not fair. That right. didn't seem, that didn't seem right. It felt icky to me. Right. Yeah. And if there are answer is there isn't any support for them or if their answer is very yeah. small yeah. or yeah it just that would be a red flag and I would tr probably go a different direction yeah yeah <laughs> I would too I would too uh, another red flag yeah. go for it oh education yeah we really believe that any consultancy or agency should be offering you education. Hey, yeah. read this book. Hey, here is an article to read. Um, or or just like personally educating you. Like he, here's you a course a that we want you to take. On and and they're yeah. educating you on that. Um, if you are, I think a, a huge one in the education part is if you're asking questions about transracial adoption Perfect. or special needs adoption and they're kind of giving answers like, oh, yeah, no big deal if you're white and you are open to adopting an African-American child, but you live in an all white neighborhood. No big deal. It's not a big deal. Uh, but it red is flag. a big deal. It yeah. is a big deal. Uh, so we, you want to be with an agency or a consultant that is helping to educate you along the way and in the process. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, educating on open adoption. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What like, is open adoption? And what what should it look like? What does it look like? Um, why it's so important? The 
the reasons that so many families choose that there, you need to be educated on that because, um, I know people who say, oh yeah, I want to do that, but I probably won't choose open adoption. Mm -hmm. I've had. That feels scary or that feels hard. Yeah, that feels scary. I don't think I could deal with that. Mm, Well, Mm. that, that's just a little bit of like a, no, no disrespect, but that's a little bit of a moment. Maybe do a heart check because Mm -hmm. it's not really about you. It's about your child Mm -hmm. or your future child and that, um, that expectant mother, the future of that relationship and that, that whole thing is so important. I mean, so education, you, you want your agency to be educating you as well on this journey you're about to embark on as you make these big decisions, Mm -hmm. as you choose which um, expectant mother to, to present your profile to all of these things you need to know. Um, because it's not, it's a big decision. Yes. Let's go back. This is a a big decision. decision. I mean, I would say it's a life altering decision. It, from that point on, when things are finalized or that paper is signed, your life is different forever. That child's life is different. The child's life is different forever. And that woman's life or that family, because we don't want to, you know, there is a family behind that woman, uh, is forever changed. So it's just, there is a gravity to adoption that you don't want to just sweep under the rug because you want to parent. Yeah. No. And I think to go back to that racial conversation real quick, we've had a couple episodes solely on this, like if you go back into our catalog of episodes, but as the the prospective adoptive family in this, I'm going to remind you that I don't, although it's so hard when you're in it because you just want, you just feel like you want to grow your family. So I'm not discounting that, but like, don't say, oh yeah, a child, any race, any whatever, any ethnicity, all of that, just so whatever's fastest. Right. Although you... Th- that's fine to say if you truly don't mind because you will be evaluated your own if you've evaluated life. your own life and your own view on different cultures because simply put because if you aren't willing to allow your child to explore their culture mm-hmm. their identity where they came from and that's uncomfortable for you then maybe you shouldn't bring a child of a different culture into your home not that you wouldn't love that child well but you want them to be able to mm-hmm. explore that as they get older and as they process that even for international adoption, uh, people that want to adopt internationally and you're saying, oh, we'll just adopt from China because I hear that that's, you know, they need a lot of people. They need yeah. parents, you know, all of these stigmas right. uh, that surround international adoption even. Uh, if you are not committed to helping your child to learn about their culture and ethnicity and connect with that in different ways through food, through art, through dance or experience Trips, or vacations. music, vacations. Yeah. Um, I know that we had a Funding Love family travel with us this year. They adopted from Thailand and they are committed to taking their children back to Thailand every two years. She actually, speak, them. the adoptive mom actually speaks Thai. Cooks tie. Yep. So she, she to keep is, them connected yeah. to their culture. So if you're only adopting internationally from a country because you've heard that that country has fast adoptions and you're not interested in bringing that culture and ethnicity into your home, yeah. I think that you should stop and you should take a step back and mm-hmm. ask yourself, are you willing to do that or do you need to consider a different route? Look at you preaching. <laughs> 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 no, I think this is all good. Um, and just to, just to wrap up, I don't want to discourage anybody in that right. process, but we really just want to make sure we really do want to make sure everybody uh, It's just I mean, I know sometimes we, I, I feel like this episode we've been a little bit like you should you don't do uh, <laughs> the, but uh, we want to encourage you on your journey and just want to make sure you're making the right decision for your family, for mm-hmm. your future child mm-hmm. um, and for your future, the future family that you would be connected to forever, like right. the birth family of your child. So I think that right. these are all important decisions and um not worth stressing over, but worth giving attention to and worth paying attention to your heart and and knowing um, which step is the right step forward. Right. Um, and it all circles back to if you if you are confused or lost or feel lonely, reach out to somebody in the adoption community, mm-hmm. whether it be Mal, whether it be myself, whether it be anybody in Funding Love or whether it be just an adoptive family you know in your community. Um, I guarantee you if you say, hey, I got a question, they'd be like, okay. Let's have coffee. So, it, because that's what we like to do. Mm-hmm. Anytime anybody in my church is like, "Hey, adoption," I'm like, "Sure, coffee win." You know. So, um, I don't, I don't really want to discourage anybody in this journey. I just want them to make the right decision Absolutely. for their family. And we want to be an education resource yeah. for you as well. Don't just seek your consultant or your agency yeah. for to be the only source of your education. Look for it yourself. Yeah. Listen to adult adoptees. Listen to birth mom voices. Yeah. Uh, talk to other adoptive families about their experiences and seek out those resources. And at the Funding Love 
adoption podcast, we would love to be that resource for you. Like Caitlin said, we have a huge catalog of previous episodes. We do. And we are committed to this season four and bringing you lots of new education. So be sure to share us with an adoptive family that you know. And uh, we would love to be that resource for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Yes. (laughs) And thank you so much. As we wrap up this, I just want to say thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Funding Love Adoption Podcast with Mel and Kate. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Cheers. Cheers.